Isaac. Should we say good morning to everyone? That's right, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our service this morning. It's really lovely to come together with you. It's lovely that we come into this space together as family. Isaac may lead some of today. We're not quite sure yet. We'll just see how we get on. He's, there you go. He's making himself at home. It's all good. Um, but you know what? We, we do come together as family this morning. Welcome to you, whether you are here every week, whether you're just visiting us. It's great to have you with us. But we come together because we come to worship God. We come together because we, we are called, I was going to say we call ourselves, but that's not true. We are called by God, his children. And so we come together as family, as those who have a bond that starts from when we started walking with Jesus and that goes to eternity. And that is something very, very special, do you know? And so this is my favorite bit of the week. It really is when we come together as family to worship God together. And we do that with everyone, with all of us. We've even got Quest in with us, and it's great to have Quest with us at the back there, wagging his tail. So, so we come together. If, if you can see the screen, then you'll have everything you need for the service this morning. If you'd like what's up on the screen in paper form, then there's some available at the back and at the front here. And as part of our service today, we will be coming forward to share communion if you would like to. Um, and we'll also have a bit of a celebration in our service today, but we'll come to that in a little while. One of the things when we come together as family is that family life has its ups and family life has its downs. As family, we share together our joys and we share together our sorrows. And I have the really sad uh, duty this morning of letting you know, as our church family, that one of our volunteers, Alec, um, who was just a beautiful man, sadly passed away on Thursday afternoon. He's been part of our community project, helping us out as a volunteer for about the last 18 months to two years. Um, and yeah, it is a huge loss for us as a church family it's a huge loss for us as a community project um alex was a an incredibly gentle uh, and generous person his gift of hospitality was outstanding if you were in the building for more than about 45 seconds he would have offered you a cup of tea at least three times he had an evangelical passion for a good pie that was exemplary and we should all learn something from um, he also had a very quiet faith he came to faith a few years ago down at st james's church down the road and alec lived that out and that was part of why he came here to serve through our community project. I know, Denise, you wanted to share something. You had um, a verse. Do, do, come, come forward, otherwise we can't hear you. Um, what's that? <laughs> Alec brought joy to the room as soon as he walked in. He was absolutely lovely. Um, I just wanted to share this text that he sent me the night before he died. Um, just part of this text, telling me not to worry, the big three was with him. He knew that God our Father was with him. He knew that Jesus Christ our Saviour was with him. And he knew that the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, was with him. Don't worry, the big three are with me. And I just feel that he just, even in the midst of his illness, he wanted to reassure me <laughs> that he was okay because mm. the big three were with him. That's brilliant. Thanks, Denise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's just take a moment just to be quiet, to remember Alec before God, and then we're going to uh, just pray. And then I'll hand over to Debbie to lead us into the next bit of our service. Lord, we thank you as we come together this morning that we do not grieve as those who have no hope. 
I thank you for that text from Alec that says that he knew the hope that you offer us in Jesus of eternal life, that he knew where he was going, that he had a home to go to with you. And Lord, as we acknowledge our loss, we thank you for Alec. We commend him into your loving care. And we pray that you would help us in our grief, comfort us, bring us peace, bring us together as a family. And Lord, would you just reaffirm to each of us the hope that we have because of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Debbie now. Thanks, Paul. Good morning, folks. Um, Paul's just told us what it means to be family in this place. And what we do, we do together. I'm going to ask Mark to put some words up on the screen that we're going to begin with. And it's an opportunity to remind ourselves that in the midst of life, be that love or loss, we come together to worship. We worship the one who gives us hope in death. So if you would like to join in, your responses will be in bold. So from different lives, we come to worship. From good weeks and bad weeks, we come to worship. Bring in great times and painful memories, we come to worship. Needing healing, needing peace, we come to worship. With hope in our hearts, we come to worship. To the almighty God, to the King of Kings, as God's family together, we come to worship. And so we say, God calls us here to worship in spirit and in truth. In the revealing light of God's grace, we know ourselves welcomed with love. In spirit, truth, light and grace, God meets us here today. Amen. We're going to begin now with our first act of sung worship. We're going to sing the hymn, Blessed Be Your Name, remembering that no matter what life throws at us, we choose to be blessed when we listen to the word of Christ. So if you are able and would like to, can you please stand? Yes. 
Lovely. I love that one line. My heart will choose to say. So we have a choice to find joy and blessing in sorrow and in celebration. Would you please take a seat? Our uh, younger people are going to go out into their family room to their own teaching. But before they do, we're going to pray for them. So who have we got? There we go. Got a Rosie. Called you by the right name this time. And a Kian and a Daniel and an Arthur and an Eve and an Isaac. So we're going to pray for you all before you go out. And you're going out this morning with Chris and Anne and Linda. So we're just going to pray. It's good we've prayed. Yeah, we prayed before. He's fine. Yeah, we've had, we've had a sermon and everything. He's good. <laughs> we're just going to pray. We're going to say, Father God, we thank you for the blessing that these young children bring to this church. The blessing that is to have them, their joy and their life experiences taught to us. So we thank you for what they all bring to this building. And we just pray that they have an amazing time this morning with their teachers and with their friends, learning more about who you are for their lives. And we ask this in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful time. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. I used the line from that song before that we choose. Our heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. And we come now to the point of our service where we choose to bring ourselves wholeheartedly to God, where we choose to say, done it again. Didn't want to, but I've done it again where we come to choose to God and say, forgive me. And we are assured of that forgiveness. So I'm going to put some words up on the screen and the responses for those that you would like to join in will be in bold. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Turn back to the Lord who will have mercy. To our God who will richly pardon. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sin and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Would you pop up this morning's collect for me, please, which we're going to pray together. Thank you, Mark. You know how much I love a collect.
I get dead excited. You know that. I love the fact that there's just tons of people up and down the country praying because sometimes this place can feel lonely. But you know what? I stand here and I look out at a sea of immense faces of family and know that in the midst of our grief and in our joys, we do this together, but not just here, up and down this country and around this world. So we're going to pray this collect together this morning. We're going to say, God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel that always abiding in you they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service through jesus christ your son our lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen all it's your turn to be steadfast in faith <laughs> brilliant so yeah as family we come with our sorrows but we also come this morning with our joys and we're going to spend a bit of time now celebrating in our service because 13 days ago beth and steve celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary which is a wonderful milestone in your lives and in the lives of your family. And you've only got to double it and you're almost a Jean and Ron, but let's not go there. <laughs> but today in our service, we are going to spend some time celebrating with Beth and Steve, marking this moment for them, giving thanks and asking God's blessing on them for the next 30 years. It all began... I was even smaller than I am now. Honestly, if you, if you see the pictures of our family at the wedding, there was family and then there was me about down here. Honestly, not much has changed since then, has it? But it began on the 12th of September, 1992 at St. Nicholas Church over in Wallasey, where Beth and Steve got married. It was my uncle, Uncle John, who married them. He was the vicar there. And at one point in the service, we were having a Bible reading as part of the service. And Uncle John announced that hot foot from France, Beth's brother Dave, was going to come and bring a Bible reading. Now, Dave was living in France at the time, uh, and he just about made it back to England in time for the wedding. And he read the Bible reading for them that was this morning. Now, Dave sadly can't be with us this morning because he again lives in France. He's making something of a habit of this. Um, but to start this point of our celebration, Hotfoot from France, Dave, is actually going to bring us our first Bible reading by the wonders of video technology. So we'll hand over to Dave now for our first Bible reading. Bonjour, Beth et Steve, et bonjour tout le monde. Hello and congratulations, Elizabeth and Steve, on 30 years of marriage. It is wonderful to play a really small part in this. And I hope you have an absolutely wonderful service and you're having a wonderful day. And it's my joy this morning to read one of the readings. And this one comes from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. And it goes like this. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will become even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks very much, big bro. I'm going to, now that she's crying, I'm going to invite Beth and Steve, I'm going to invite them up, up to the front because they want to, I think Steve just wanted to say a couple of words and then we're going to spend a couple of minutes just praying uh, for these guys. Um, so I'm going to invite them to come forward. They are coming. So the, just as a bit of context, Dave there uh, is, is over at Spring Harvest in France, which he manages. And these guys have just spent the last two weeks or so with my mum over there with Dave. Um, so, yeah, very special time, I understand. Thank you. Your second. <laughs> I can't normally get a word in edgeways. Um, yeah, I now feel half the man I was 60 years, 30 years. And uh, I've been quite emotional the last eight uh uh, months and Dave's just tipped me over the edge um, but I'm hoping the spirit will keep me strong and hopefully I can say a few words that I may have tried to remember or forget I don't know um, yes so it was 12th of September uh, when, we, when we got uh, married um, in the 30 years um, the best thing I think we've got to show for it is Matthew and uh, uh, Molly our son and daughter uh, without a shadow of a doubt and if we achieve nothing else on, on planet earth then we, I think we've done well there. Do you, do you agree with that? Um, we first, um, I'll keep it short. I'll say as much as I can in the shorter space of time as I can. Uh, five quick things so we all know where we are so nobody panics. Uh, first thing, um, uh, we met on the 21st of July uh, 1990. Um, and since that day, uh, we then spent five months together as friends. Uh, then a further eight months um, as boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, then an engagement of 13 months, um, and then uh, 30 years and 13 days of marriage. Uh, and yesterday, <laughs> it was only yesterday that Elizabeth said the last seven days have been really tough. <laughs> uh, number two, um, some people, number two, uh, some people say, uh, no, number two is if I had to, you know, sum it up in one word, because some people say what makes a happy marriage and what makes it work and all this kind of thing. If I could only use one word, uh, then I would use the word love. Um, if you needed to expand on that, uh, then I would remind you to read 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13. And it says it's so much better than I can even begin to put into words of, about love. Um, those of you reading the uh, New Testament Proverbs and Psalms in a year would have read that uh, uh, last month on Friday, the 19th of August. Uh, and I'm hoping that we've got our new uh, readers, not quite there yet, but ready for, for next month. Um, number three, um, love at first sight. Um, some people say no, no such thing it doesn't exist. Um, there is a distinct difference between love and lust. Uh, and it does tell you quite clearly in the Bible, and it also tells you the pitfalls of that. Um, I can assure you it was love at first sight. Um, we were at a hotel wedding reception uh, in the bar of a hotel, not quite sat down yet, ready for, for the dinner, you know, the, the breakfast, whatever it's called, um, and not quite ready for that reception. And uh, we were probably about five metres apart, a very crowded bar, and sat down, and in a space of about a minute, our eyes made contact three times. Uh, the first time, I guess, was probably just a couple of seconds, just a, just a a couple of seconds probably about 10 seconds passed and then we caught eye contact again and that lasted for about five seconds which is quite a long time um, and then inside that minute still we then finally made contact for the third time and it was as if the bar just went quiet 
there was no more music there was no more people there was no more chattering and we were just looking deep into each other's eyes for about 10 seconds which complete strangers that is quite a long time to be looking into each other's <laughs> eyes um, and it actually finished uh, as we broke both with with a smile um, so if anybody says uh, love at first sight does not uh, exist um, all we can say is that since that moment we have 28,754 days that says that it <laughs> exists. You um, each stage. <laughs> and uh, just, just to clear things up, I have included the eight leap years. Um, yes, it's retirement, you do have far too much time on your hands. Uh, number four, our wedding vows, September the 12th, 92, we made our wedding vows. Um, we said, should we renew our vows today or, you know, on our 30th wedding anniversary? And we decided, no, we meant them when we said them. However, since we said that, I have softened slightly. Um, and I believe that if we're still on planet Earth together in 20 years, we'll be together. But if we're still blessed to be here uh, in 20 years time uh, together, um, then our 50th, then yes, we will look to renew our wedding vows. And you're all welcome to the party. Um, <coughs> Yeah. Hey. Oh, I oh, forgot in my words. Yeah. I think, you know when you, right. you know when you take notes and you put them in your pocket and then you change it to the last minute. The notes are gone. Um. Uh, no. So that, so that's all good. Um. And then oh the, yeah. So when um. So as well as my wedding vows, obviously Elizabeth's dad John, and he preferred to be known as John. That was his middle name, but he liked to be known as John. And uh, before John went to sleep, um, my last words to John were thank you for letting me marry your eldest daughter Elizabeth and uh, I promise I will look after her so I've got my vows and, and that promise. Uh, on our 30th anniversary over in France uh, I sat down with Erica and Elizabeth by the river and I made that same promise again uh, to Erica um, so with the two promises combined and my vows I'm committed <laughs> uh, so, so there we go and then finally and fifthly um, finally and fifthly I thought you had uh, about seven now yeah yeah no. <laughs> Well, uh, last, one, on. uh, last one is Elizabeth, Elizabeth herself. Um, so she is a wonderful person. She's a lovely woman. She's very kind. She's caring. She's trustworthy. She's loyal. I'm not very good at English. I'm sure you can expand it for word after word after word about this uh, lovely person, Elizabeth. Um, and whether it's out of context or not, I'm going with it anyway. Um, I was poorly uh, back in March, uh, back in April, May uh, in 2015. And uh, I was uh, mentally ill. And um, when I say mentally ill, I was put into hospital. Uh, I was there for a few weeks. Um, I was held under Section 2 of the Mental Health Act. And um, at one stage, Elizabeth couldn't even visit me. Uh, I was in isolation uh, in a room on my own uh, with a guard outside the door. And that was for my own safety. That was for my own safety. Looking back, I wonder if that guard was an angel. And that was a start of our recovery and journey. We then went uh, for six years uh, down to move back down south. Um, without realizing it, we'd isolated ourselves from family. Um, we've isolated ourselves from church. When I say from church, because we moved, we were trying to find a new church. Uh, we were actually at church for one year, approximately a year, uh, and somebody turned around to us and said, oh, are you new here? We never went back again, I'm afraid to say. Um, so we had a rough, rocky ride. What I'm trying to say in a nutshell is to boil it down, is that it's, because a lot of people thought it was four or five months, poor old Steve, poor old Steve, four or five months. No, it was six years, but it wasn't poor old Steve. It was Elizabeth. She looked after me. She cared for me and she loved me. Not only for six years, but the additional two years since. In the last two years, I have become very touched and close with the Holy Spirit. And I now know, looking back, that might be used further down the line for, for whatever reason. But what I want to say is, Elizabeth, she is shy. Um, she's a quiet person and she's a little person. So all those characteristics, <laughs> all those characteristics. Have you seen us? She's got a hit. <laughs> All characteristics are uh yeah can get overlooked so if you're a daughter sister mum friend church mumly friend don't wait don't lose that time and tell her how much you love her how much you care for her because i do and i just want to finally finish you'll be glad to know because it's nearly tea time um i just want to finish by saying elizabeth Anne bentley elizabeth 
and gardener. Thank you for looking after me. Thank you for marrying me. And I love you and adore you. Bless you guys. Well, just, just before you go and sit down, let's, let's just take the opportunity to pray for these guys. And I know that you, when we met the other night to talk through this, you chose a prayer or between us, we chose a prayer that you had used in your wedding service, which was the old form of the service, the Book of Common Prayer, but it's a beautiful prayer. And so we're going to pray that over you. Okay as we just give thanks for their love, for their devotion to each other, and for actually, marriage has a wider impact, not just on you as a couple, which you focused on. Marriage has an impact on family. It has an impact on community. Um, and so as we pray for that, we give thanks for all that um, lots of us have benefited from your marriage and from your love for each other. So let's just pray these words. O oh God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, bless these thy servants and sow the seed of eternal life in their hearts, that whatsoever in thy holy word they shall profitably learn, they may indeed fulfill the same. Look, O oh Lord, mercifully upon them from heaven and bless them. And as thou didst send thy blessing upon Abraham and Sarah to their great comfort, so vouchsafe to send thy blessing upon these thy servants, that, obeying thy will, and always being in safety under thy protection, they may abide in thy love unto their lives' end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are going to sing our next hymn now, which will lead us into our second Bible reading, which is a great hymn of speaking of God's love. We're going to sing Love Divine or Love's Excelling. So if you're able, would you like to stand as we sing together? See 
I'm now going to invite Sue to come forward to bring our second Bible reading. The reading is Timothy 6, 619. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in an unapproachable life, light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honour and might forever. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, which richly provides us with everything for our employment, enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you very much, Sue. So we're going to have a think about these Bible readings. As we do that, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you love to speak to us. That you give us your word, that you give us your spirit. And I pray as we look at your word this morning, please would you speak to each of us and give us open hearts that we might hear from you in the way that we need to this morning. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Every morning of the week, Monday to Friday, we have a walk to school. It takes us about somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes to walk to school. But I know that the first five minutes or so of that walk are going to be determined by the conversations that have taken place just before we walk out of the door. We can either walk out of the door in relative peace and enjoyment, enjoying the fact that the sun is shining down on us, that we're a beautiful family, we love each other, and all is well in the world. 
Oh, and I'd just like to say it's generally my fault. I'm not at my best in the mornings, okay? There can be bawling and screaming as we walk down the road, and that's just me and Heather to say nothing of the kids. <laughs> Those first few minutes before we walk out of the door, they can't half make a difference. They really can. How we, how we set out sets the tone for the rest of the journey. Beth and Steve have been talking today about the vows that they made to each other 30 years ago. And I always say to wedding couples, you set the bar really high as you're starting out in your married life here. Because what you say in your vows, you will never say anything more significant to each other. In, in the exchanging of rings, the words now say there, all that I have, I give to you. All that I am, sorry, all I have, I share with you. All that I am, I give to you. 100% in, nothing held back. And that has shaped, for the two of you and for many, many others here, shaped your lives and your married lives together. When the queen set out on her journey, she said that she would give herself to the nation and the Commonwealth in service. But she acknowledged at the same time she couldn't do that without the help of God. Right from the outset, she subjected herself to the authority of Jesus in her life. And that held her and that shaped her reign. Contrast that with New Year's resolutions. Often we make them, don't we, at the beginning of the year, because that's what you do, but we have no intention of keeping them whatsoever, even if we do go and invest in the gym pass that we're never going to visit. Yeah, our heart's not in it, is it? It makes no difference to how we live. When Paul writes to Timothy here, he's trying to encourage him, live in a way that is going to make a difference. And he uses this word, pursue. He says, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. This pursue, it, it means, it's the same word that is translated somewhere else as press on, I press on towards the goal. That sense of going after something with all of your passion and energy, your heart is in it, your mind is set towards it until you get it. Paul says, pursue that, pursue those things, the righteousness, the godliness, the faith, the love, the endurance, the gentleness. He could have added to that list. But at the same time, Paul also gives Timothy a warning. Because before he says, pursue that, he says, but you, man of God, flee from all of this, what he's been talking about previously of the temptations that will be around him in the world. He says, flee from those things that will take you in a different direction. And that implies to Timothy that there is an element of choice here. There is an element of danger of going down something that is the wrong way. When we went on holiday over the summer, um, over to where? Dave is, um, to uh, Le Paz Opton, uh, Spring Harvest in France, there was a lady giving the Bible talks in the mornings called um, Rachel Jordan Wolf. Um, she heads up Hope Together. And one of the things that she talked about uh, when we were reading through Nehemiah, really interestingly and challengingly, was that there is no objective neutral world out there. We can't just say, I'm going to step away from making any choice as to who or what I follow. We don't get that privilege. We choose who or what we follow. Or if we choose not to do that, then someone or something is going to choose for us. Culture doesn't have a neutral there will always be something or someone acting on us saying, you need to follow me. And each of those things is going to have its own motivation for why we should follow it or them. So Paul's saying, choose well, choose right who you are going to follow. Because it will make a difference. The reason we make vows in marriage 
is to say, this is what I'm choosing. I'm defining from the outset, this is where I'm going. This is the shape of our married life. There's a reason the Bible says, instruct a child in the way they should go, and they won't depart from it. As time goes by, I get more and more grateful for uh, the, the, the foundation of faith that I was given by my parents, that foundation that they gave me that I can now build on. We choose who we're going to follow. We set the tone for what life is going to be like by those decisions that we make or the decisions that we don't make. That in itself isn't a neutral decision. But Jesus says, when you're choosing, don't forget that I say, I come that you might have life and have it to the full. What tone do we start out with? The context for this passage in 1 Timothy is Paul is talking about wealth and the distraction of wealth we've been thinking about for the last three weeks in our readings from Luke as well. We've been talking about how we use money wisely, how we use it in a God-honoring way that brings life to us and others, and that shows as followers of Jesus that we can have different priorities, going back to pursuing righteousness, godliness, faith, and so on. And do you know what? It works. That's the thing. It works. Following Jesus actually works. The Queen said that apart from Jesus Christ, no one has ever offered a better formula. It's quite something, isn't it? I agree with her. I think Jesus gives us a shape for life here and to eternity that doesn't let us down. So who do we choose to follow? What's the tone that we choose for our life? I want to encourage us to let Jesus be the tone of our life. But as we journey along, where do we put our hope? Well, Paul's encouragement to Timothy here is to put your hope in something that won't let you down. He says, don't put it in wealth because that's uncertain. Recent fiscal events have led us to realize that, do you know what? Finance goes up, finance comes down. We have money, we don't have money. It's transient at best. It really is. It's not bad. We can do amazing things with money. It's all about our heart, isn't it, isn't it? But Paul says, root your hope. Not in that stuff that you didn't bring and you won't take with you. Root your hope in God. At the Queen's funeral, she had the, the hymn, All My Hope in God is founded not in her orb and scepter or in her authority or in her role or all of that kind of stuff. She said, actually, number one is God. That's where my hope is. Everything else flows from that. And she lived her life by that and that faith underpinned everything. A building with poor foundations will eventually fall down. Where do we put our hope? Paul's command to Timothy is to put hope in God, the God who provides for today, who provides for eternity, a life that is truly satisfying. And he says elsewhere that this hope will not disappoint us because God has poured his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us. So what's the tone we start out with? Where do we put our hope as we journey along? And finally, who do we journey with? Because we don't journey alone. Going into our reading from John 15, 
Jesus says, remain in me, abide in me. Make sure that you are attached to the vine, to the source of your life. That place, that person, Jesus, from whom true life comes. If you think back to the story of the prodigal son, he said, you know what? Give me my wealth now. I want it now. Let me have my independence, my freedom. I want to go and live by my rules and do all of that. And he goes off and having plumbed the absolute heights and absolute depths of human experience, he comes back a broken yet wiser person and he falls on the gracious loving kindness of his father who just welcomes him home. We find our home and true life with God. We find our home and true life as a child of God in his family with his beautiful family members. Journeying together, encouraging each other and supporting each other with the gracious help of God's Holy Spirit. We don't do it alone. Remain in me, says Jesus remain in my family so we start out right we go after the right thing and maybe do you know what in that we need to repent repent in the bible means i'm going one way and i need to turn around and go in a different direction we recognize we need to go god's way and maybe we can make that decision to do that today start out right go after the right thing put your hope in the right place on the God who created you, who loves you, who will never let you down. And we do it together. Let God and God's people accompany you on the most exciting journey through life, that there is life in all of its fullness. Amen. We're going to stand in a minute and affirm our faith through our creed. But I've, I've been sat listening to, to Paul this morning, and apologies for going uh, slightly off piste and off service sheet. Um, this morning, we've heard the word choose and choice throughout. Our first hymn said we have a choice, our heart, we choose to love. Beth and Steve chose to love each other through their greatest joys in their children and in their greatest tragedies and vulnerabilities. And we've just heard the joy of choosing who we have our hope in, who we choose to journey with. So I just want to say, if you are in this building and you have not yet chose to follow a life with Christ, or if you have chose to follow like a life with Christ and need that reaffirming and you want us to pray with you, then please come and find Paul or myself or anybody in this building and tell them you want to make a choice and we will sit with you in that choice and we will pray with you and we will walk with hope on a journey with you and with Christ so please if you feel that that's you this morning the end of the service come and find one of us or if you just want one of us to sit with you and go it's going to be all right we will do that for you but now we get to make a choice we get to stand and decide if we want to affirm our faith in the God that we have chosen to walk with. So if you are able, would you please stand as we join together with our creed? So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Would you please take a seat? We're going to begin our preparations now for communion, and we're going to do that by spending some time in prayer. And this morning, we're actually going to be blessed that our children, our younger members, are going to be leading our prayers this morning. Lovely. So shall we pray? We pray for our world that it will know peace and not conflict. We pray especially for the country of Ukraine. We 
pray for the country that people charge will look after all those who need it the most. We pray for our community that they would be warm and have enough food and we pray for the work of the Oak Community Project as they help look after our neighbours. We pray for all who work in our church and serve in, our, in your name. I serve in our church. For our church family. Our church family. Who are unwell. And sad. And it's you. Or that need your help. And need your help. We pray that everyone will know your love and love as you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Family Room, for leading us this morning in our prayers. Would you please stand? God is love. And those who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Feel free to share a sign of the peace with those that are around you as begin to prepare for communion. My Jesus, my Saviour, for there is none like my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love my comfort my shelter tower of refuge and strength let every breath Yes. 
And so we're invited right into that promise as we come with bread and wine, those signs of God's new covenant, that new promise to us that in the blood of Jesus, we have forgiveness, we have new life with God. And so there are some words going to come up on the screen if you'd like to join in with the words in bold print. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Would you like to sit or kneel as we pray? It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of the supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as Jesus taught us, together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
As we close, as Debbie said earlier, if there's anyone who would like us to pray with you after this service, then please do just come and grab one of us. You're welcome to come through for some tea and coffee. And I think there are cakes today um, to celebrate with Beth and Steve, but to celebrate as we always do as a family. So that's just through in St. Anne's room behind here. But before we go, let's hear God's blessing towards us. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.